Let's move on to our yeah, guest speaker back. now. Uh, so we're very really fortunate and privileged to have oh. with us Dr. Haniel Banat. Dr. Haniel Banat is not really need the introduction, as he is known, but I'll still do something. Uh, he is the co-founder of Islamic Relief Worldwide. He completed his uh, degree in medicine at Al Azhar University in Cairo, and he also has a diploma in Islamic studies. He was also awarded Hamilton Bay Prize in Medicine at City Hospital in 1981 in Birmingham. He also has a doctorate of medicine. Uh, following the departure from Islamic Relief, he founded Muslim Charities for and Human Charities for which seeks to foster partnership and cooperation among human charities and charitable organizations across the global south and north. He also founded the Card House to aid the growth of new charities. Uh, currently, he is president of Human Charities for Chairman and Muslim Charities for and the Card House as well. But his contribution to the community the charity sector is immense. Everyone who has been involved in Muslim affairs knows Dr. Rafani, his dedication, his contribution, and another thing which isn't mentioned here is that he has helped to nurture a huge number of individuals joining to Islam Relief now, providing leadership in different organizations in different capacities, not only in the UK, around the world, in big and national and international organizations. Welcome, Dr. Hanley. We're very privileged to have you here and to learn and listen uh, from you, learn from your video. Exactly. Please go ahead. Alhamdulillah, uh, Assalamu Rasulullah. First of all, I'm very happy to be invited just when Sister Zara called me and told me, come. I instantly, without any hesitation, accepted the invitation because I believe in MCB. Because, I say it again, I believe in MCB. MCB is a vehicle for all of us. If we want to succeed, we have to connect, we have to network, we have to coordinate and build partnership between us. And my, my interaction with you will be nine points. First of all, do we believe in MCF or not? If we believe in it, we have to provide. Sorry, sorry? MCB. What's, what did it say? MCF. Oh, okay, oh, sorry. My apology, my apology. All right, all right, all right. Order, order. Keep using the same speech, Dr. It is, I am not the chairman anymore of, of MCF. Okay, I'm, 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 I, if we believe in MCB, we have to provide resources. We have, we have, we have to provide resources. Otherwise, we are jokers. We are jokers no matter what we call ourselves as organizations and no matter how much money we have in our bank account for, for our organization. We have to support, how can I find an organization without full-time staff and do ask such an organization to make a change? From the SCG to all the staff, how can you find an organization to become effective without the members paying their membership fees or delaying the membership fees payment? How can we have a powerful and effective organization if we do not ask her to strategize our work? Most of us, brothers and sisters, are firefighters. Extremely difficult for us to think. MCB, Secretariat, can think for us. Can find the ways to connect, to network, to communicate, to capacity build, and to direct us. But if we don't believe in MCB, we'll never move the vehicle after 25 years, which is uh, to be this is a part of the first cornerstone of do we believe in MCB or not? I don't think we believe in it. Because after 25 years, without having all these facilities provided to MCB, we are jokers. No matter who are you or who I am. I'm saying this because I have seen it 
when I was in Islamic Relief, then I'm seeing it now with another organization doing the same thing as well. We struggle to get our membership uh, fees from our, our, our uh, uh, partners and our members as well. This is number one. If you believe in MCB, MCB is about research, is about training, is about capacity building, is about thinking, is about community networking, is about building partnership. This MCB, MCB is not an implementing agency. You implement, but you tell the MCB to do what you cannot do. So they, can do the, they can do the process of thinking for all of you. This point number one. Also in point number one, I, I said about employment of full-time staff from top to bottom. That's it. Otherwise, we are not believers. This number one. Number two, this kind of 0% admin, which is going viral among a certain organization. Just take it from me. Whoever tells you 0% admin is a joker. No work on earth done without any admin cost. On the national level or on the international level. On the national level, it could go from 5 to 15%. On the international level, go beyond 25, beyond 15%. So whoever tells you 30%, don't donate to them. I stand before Allah to defend this. And I ask them to come and challenge me publicly, not privately. This is the, the, the challenge number one of actually, the point number one of actually believing in MCB. I have quite a few points for all of us. Also, and the first point, don't ever and never worship the logo and the ego or the personality. Unfortunately, we're still suffering up till now from certain heavy personality do not want to move and we don't want to move them. This is a failure in the structure of any organization. The logo, the ego, and the person. Build organization that can stand while you are there and while you are leaving it. Alhamdulillah. All right, I'll put some few points. What LAS means? Leave a space. What CS means? Create a space. What FTG mean? Find the gap. Your role is to leave a space to young people. Come here. Come next to me. <laughs> Where's your brother? And to sisters. Leave a space. Whether we like it or not, you cannot do it alone. No one organization could be unisex. In age and in sex as well. You can't just say that we are the big bosses. I'm now 27, alhamdulillah. And you are older than myself. 25. No, you are 55. You are 55 because you are 5'5". Five five. <laughs> I'm younger than him. At the age of 27, which is my age, you can't bring everybody at this age. And you can't make them men only. Woman has a role to play in running, in structuring, in thinking. Young people have a role to play. Young people are the energy. Woman and the emotion, actually, and the love and the care. Men like you bring the wisdom and the experience. So you cannot do it alone. You cannot do it alone. From day one, it was Khadija, radiallahu anha, with Khadija was Aisha and the others, but Khadija was the cornerstone. It was Ali at the age of nine, Abdullah ibn Umar and the other, and it was Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman. Were the Prophet ﷺ qualified from Cambridge or Oxford University? No. He knew and he knows that actually they have to be a solid component in the structure of his movement, the movement for the Ummah itself. So if you want MCB to be the movement of the Ummah on the level of UK or in the international level, these three Partners have to be there. Young people, women, and wise people. Or okay, let them call wise people, not old people. Huh? Because all, both of us have no hair. <laughs> this is the point number two. Create a space. By hook or a crook, you have the mentality of creativity. Creativity is creation. Creation is a space. If you want to plant 
uh, a crop. You cannot just put every seed next to another. They will never become very fruitful. Or the date tree or the palm tree or others. You have to keep a space for growth. You have to create a space for me, space for the SG, space for the executives, space for everybody to grow and give them independence and decision maker. Not every time that the trustees or the board nag them, nag them, nag them, give a space. So we took LS, which is leave a space, L, uh, CS, create a space. In my good old days, it was a good relationship between myself and the trustees. They gave us a space. That's why we grew very strongly as executives. Even was quite often challenging the board members at that time. That's why we still have an organization after 40 years functioning. And you are one of the people who are advising them. So leave a space is a compelling duty on every board member. Create a space is the compelling duty of the creativity of the mind of the individual who runs the organization. FTG is your role to find the gap. FTG to fill the gap. FTG, fill the gap. I'm an acronym man, because I'm a street man. I'm not an office man. I'm not a director. I'm not a president. I'm not a CEO. I never was, I never will be. I'm not a consultant. FTG, LAS, CAS are the, the things that we need to create in our organization. Other challenge is the issue of imams. Do our imams understand the culture of the country? Do our imams with due respect huh? understand the language? Not everybody who can speak English or Arabic or French speak English or Arabic and French. Because you can speak an English which nobody can understand or a French that nobody can comprehend or Arabic that nobody can understand as well. Who, who is our imam? Or who are our imams? What is the role of the mosque in the community? What are your role? Is to sit and teach the people who come to the mosque or to outreach the people who never come to the mosque? Is to educate the people there who are wearing hijab or to ask the sister who do not wear hijab and to convince them is only to talk to the Muslims from your sectarian background or theological background or to be an open platform for everybody to come to you. We are always living in our comfort zone. Our comfort zone is self-destructive and deadly. What's our role in the coming wave of change the value for life in life. And you know the new values imposed on all of us. What's your stand on such new values coming to your schools, to the children, to the mother, to the father, to everyone? Where is the mosque stands? In this, we still look, talk about the ego and logo. If you don't put my logo, put my president to speak, I'm not coming. Who are you? Who are you? You have been made by the community. By the way, believe that these mosques have been created by the community, not by the group. If I analyze the income of any mosque in any area, I found maybe 10-15% of the income from the membership and 85% comes from the community or nearby. Community should be involved in running the mosque. Not only the group should be running the mosque. This is another challenge for all of us. Last point is how we can be creative. First of all, create the space, leave the space. Because if you don't leave the space, you will never discover the ability of anyone, volunteer or young man or young woman. You will never. Okay? This number one, inclusivity. Why only we bring to the table some people that we like to be with them. 
and they do not represent the majority of the community. Inclusivity is number two. Number two, number three, when you are a, a, a leader of a mosque or a leader of an organization, you have to interact with the community. I myself am very proud to come today because I'm listening to the discussion which will teach me more and more. Nobody is above learning. Nobody ever should consider himself or herself above learning. We should learn till we die. And even if you go to, if I go to, the, to my grave, I'll keep learning. Because I'll be having a discussion with the angels. Tell them, please, don't take me to hell. <laughs> I'm just begging them. <laughs> Inshallah. This is number A, interaction with the community. Listening. Do we listen to others? Do we listen to the troublemakers in our organizations? Do we listen to the sister, which I find a lot of young Muslim sisters without naming them? were vocal at certain time and we pushed them out. We pushed a lot of young Muslims out and they became anti us. Why? Because they have a different opinion. Even our children, sometimes we don't listen to them. Listening okay, will, will become a part of creativity because when I listen to you, I might discover something in what you are discussing, but when I put you off, I will never discuss it and they will never become creative. Impartiality, it's something because we are dealing with public fund. It has to be done. It has to be done. I'm just uh, like saying order. Huh? It has to be done. Partiality, not my group only. Not my group only. Not my sheikh only. Not. <sighs> Communication, networking, and partnership. Do we believe if we have a great idea that we sit down together and discuss it and we do it collectively? I would like to be ahead of others. I am the first to do it. I am the most. I am the fastest. I am, I am, I am. This is deadly weapon and self-destructive. Quite often, with the little organization that I'm involved in, which is more smaller than, uh, than, than, than whatever it is. I'm not being confused between MC and the B and the F, okay? Well, they are two and a half people. Two and a half people, okay? But we have to do it, to network, to connect, build partnership. And when we do it, people come. We, in spite of the fact that we are the creator of the idea, with our staff, with our time, with our effort, dropped our logo. Twice or three times this year for the networking for the earthquake in Syria, the earthquake in Turkey, the Sudan conflict, and now with Libya and Morocco. If we don't, we don't realize that keeping the logo outside the scene it's a successful story and it's a sign of your maturity. No matter how many stuff you have. And for the people who are listening to me, if you keep fighting for the logo, I'm not going to pay the money for you unless you put the logo there. You are not talking about actually the issue of the society, the issue of the community. Talk about your personality and your ego. See, this kind of purification of the soul is very important on the personal level. Uh, empowerment. Do we empower our community? Do we enable them to stand up on their feet? Or they be always the time coming depending on us? And do we, are we good in community building? Social and building social infrastructure is more difficult than doing any relief operation or any development operation, international operation. More difficult because each individual in the society is a project and a problem by himself or herself. I just put, wanted to put all these uh, challenges, which I thought about it, as a request from my teacher, uh, Sister Zara, when she asked me to come here. I could not be able to say no. Because MCB is something I believe in it. And if you don't believe in it, just go away. We don't want you. You can go with the few 
who can believe in it, but we don't want the many who are disbelievers in MCB. I stop. Yeah, so we now have some Q&A for about probably 15 minutes. And, and, but before that, I just wanted to now uh, formally congratulate Zala Mani. We have finally found Yuvun Khan, who is the chairman, and we've also been joined by Zala Tofail, actually, in flex, the assistant chairman. Uh, so we both and now have the responsibility of MCB's finances. And inshallah, hopefully you will to your best. So, any questions from, from uh, online as well as uh, Any critical, difficult, I am I'm ready for it. Yes, brother. <coughs> um, I have a question. I mean, you spoke. Huh? Can I take this one? Yeah. Uh, you spoke briefly about our mosques being the building blocks of our community. Yeah. And before you came, Mother Teresa started talking about churches that are being. Now, this is something pretty controversial that I, a thought that I hold, a belief that I have, that does there come a point from your point of view in society, especially, specifically, specifically in Britain, where we have an established Muslim community where rather than investing in Muslim and other communities' money into a mosque, we invest it into a waqf for a a building for the homeless or a building or a business or whatever that is income generating for the community because for example we see every time the community has managed to put together a few hundred thousand or a few ten thousand they will go and build a mosque which is a very noble cause in and of itself but are we not at a stage in Britain where you're never further away specifically in London for example in Bradford and Birmingham than a half an hour drive to your, to your nearest mosque so at what point do you think us Muslims should, not in a bad way, but stop thinking about... Whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Stop thinking about let's build another mosque and rather let's build a... Let's fund the legal foundation, a yeah. legal training for Muslim, for an uh, investment fund yeah. for young entrepreneurs. Yeah. How do you draw that out? First of all, build the people who go to the mosque before you build the mosque. This is how the ulama who understood the different schools of thoughts worked very hard on building the human being, not building the bricks and the stones and the walls. You build these walls, nobody come to it. What is the point of having three, four thousand mosques? Worlds are empty. One day, our mosque will be sold, like the churches today. Can you guarantee it? No, because we are not invested in the right and the most fruitful investment which come here which is the young people, the human being. I'm not joking. The mosque cost us two, three million pounds. Is that right? Having a program, proper program for the young generation, even for the community, even for the Muslims, will bring the second, third, and fourth, and fifth generation. This number one. You said established. Are you sure it's established? Or is still establishing? or becoming established, or being in the process, we're not established yet. Establishment gives you the time to think, to reflect. As I mentioned, quite a few challenges. How many strategic paper that we produce as a research based, okay, and put to the government, and it make a policy, actually, and it affect the law, the local law. How much is in our budget, actually? How much is the percentage in our budget of research, training, capacity building? Do we know how can we create a culture? How can we protect a culture? Do we know how can we create a philosophy of thinking? We are only making hafiz. Good. For me, hafiz is good. But I don't want any more hafiz. I want the alim. If you celebrate hafiz and stop at hafiz, it's good, but it's not what the community needs. You need to enable the Hafiz to become alim, to empower him, him or her. 
We only make the hafiz amongst the men or the young boys. How about the hafiza? As I mentioned to some of the people uh, in the schools in Manchester two days ago, the women who were teaching Qiraat to the greatest reciters in Egypt were women. Why you put her? A... Please don't come next to me. Why? She's my mother, she's my daughter, she's my sister, she's my auntie, she's my wife. She's my colleague. This kind of mentality come from our culture. You know why we don't create a space? Because we came from countries which have minimum or no civil liberty spaces. And we're still affected by the culture of our country, the, or the countries of origin. Even if we are professors in the universities, even if we are MPs, even if we are the most successful businessmen, we treat our Islamic organization in a very naive, traditional way, but we treat our business and the university and the government offices in a different way. Schizophrenic individuals. I'm just saying it because I felt it through my 46 or 47 years in this country. Why did we kill young Muslims as an organization? It was a fight between the elders in different groups and people do not want to admit it and they can't challenge anyone in the background because I was a part of the support of the young Muslims in the 80s and 90s and the 2000s. And who killed young Muslims as a young girl? You are one of them. But you're still alive, Alhamdulillah. No, no, you are not a killer. You are another one. These two witness how, how, how it was very strong and dynamic. And every child in the country wanted to join. Where is the replacement of young Muslims nowadays? With all the thousands of mosques. Does the mosque produce leaders? The mosque produces listeners. The, port, the mosque produces followers. Because the mosque invests money in buildings, not in souls, mind, and heart. If we don't go back to invest in human beings, we will always be followers. And I'm saying at the end of my, uh, my 27 now, next year I'll be 37. Next year, 37. Now. Yeah, okay, uh, 47. <laughs> Still younger than you. If we don't invest in human beings, we are waste of time. And all these mosques, and to the people who listen to me, will be sold in the market. Like any other uh, worshipping places. Ah, waqf is for what? For what? To create money only? To reinvest it. Yeah. My investment, whether waqf or not waqf, is in... Come, I keep, I keep hitting you. <laughs> in him and her. This is a, even if we don't have money. To conclude this point, a chairman should be the one who is mentoring any volunteer come to the organization. A CEO should be the one who is mentoring any volunteer coming to the organization. Not to keep it to a, an officer and the chairman have no time. If you have no time, don't chair it. This chair is not for somebody who don't, does not have time. That's why most of the companions of the Prophet refused to take the responsibility. Sayyid ibn Amr, who was actually the Amir of Hims, when they complained about him, three complained, he came back to Omar. You know, when he, when, he, when he was appointed, he brought all the great leaders of the community to them, you collect the zakat and you spend the zakat because he would, would like to keep his hand clean. Then three, three complaints came against him. First, he came out late in the morning. Second, one day a week, he does not come out from his house. Third, he has fits when he is uh, uh, sitting amongst us. So the complaint went from the, from the community into Omar. He brought him and he knew that his choice was best, but he wanted to investigate. There was no complacency, no nepotism between Omar and Sayyid ibn Amr. He told him, did they say this about me, Omar? He said, yes, tell me. First of all, I come late because I don't have servant. I have to do the housework for my wife first, before I come out. Second, I don't come one day a week because I have only one garment and I wash it. 
Thirdly, I have this fit because I remember that I failed one of my brothers when he was captured by the Akufar while I was not Muslim. And I failed to support him. When I realize and see this in front of me, I had this kind of fit. How dare he didn't support your brother and he was not a Muslim. So he was making himself accountable. He was make. He was making himself accountable to somebody who was not having his own deen at that time. But when he came back to Omar, you know what he told Omar? Enough is enough. Not anymore. Brothers and sisters, chairmanship is not a prestige. It's not a title. It's not a status. It's responsibility. Because whoever became, whoever were risen to this position will be surrounded by the glaze of the glazing eyes who think that you can do it for them. The children who don't have schools, the woman who became widow at the age of 20 or 25, or the sick people. So when you sit with this chair, fulfill the responsibility. And the responsibility is not one size. It's not a job description. It's not a salary. It's not a title. The responsibility is heaven or hell. And this is when we need you to invest in human being. <sighs> So we'll take a few more questions and then we will have a, a short break. Uh, we want, there was a conference in Brazil, but we haven't taken it. Keep, keep the <laughs> You are the expert builder. The master
Thank you. That's my question. My <laughs> suggestion is here. If the very happy to believe in us, that is your love and our sleeping. My big initiative to to make at least one million power who has a new beloved Mr. Dalai in the position of the Secretary General for Sigma to be a uh, lot of fun so that they can support and see the and build from there inshallah. That's my suggestion. To let them up to answer this question, we have to revisit the job description, whether we like it or not. A CEO has to have the time to think, to reflect, to dwell, to connect, to travel, to find opportunity and support. You might tell me it will cost us money. It will, but it will create more money if you measure the growth of the organization only with money. If you have a CEO, which cost you, or a director, or a senior manager, which cost you 80,000, 100,000 pounds a year, and he becomes firefighter. I had the discussion with people in a very stable organizations. And they said, we cannot even scratch our hair or our head. They are not as a small organization. No, 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 no. They have hundreds of millions of pounds from the CEO to the head of the program said, we can't find. Change the job description. Give me a space to think. Make a part of your job description 40 to 50% of your time to think. Why the Ram Muslims are doing it? I'm being productive. <coughs> Sometimes they're criticizing the CEO of the Richard Cross in the, uh, at, the, at the beginning of this century because his, his salary was more than 200,000 pounds. But he was creating initiatives. He was advocating. Does our organization believe in advocacy? Do they know what advocacy means? I, 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 I. This is sometimes very painful. It's advocacy and being written in the Quran as many times, three times. Al-Had. La huddun ala ta'am miskeen. Advocacy is in the textbook of Quran, but we don't apply it because we don't understand it. So when I come back, I have to visit all the job description and to invest in the people who are running the organization. It will cost money for me in the first and second year, but the space for them to think, to interact, to bring the good opportunity will create more money for all of us at a longer term. Brother Hamid, without that and with the interference of the trustees, and you know what I'm talking about, because I know your background, and you know my background, okay, won't go nowhere. We'll be firefighters forever. Yes, sir. So what one million pounds? What what is that? Is that? He wanted uh, while Zara is in post to raise one million pounds from whom? MCB. Empower Zara. I'm not just joking. I understand. I understand. Uh, to take initiative as a as a friend. You're the fundraiser. You, you raise one million pounds for MCB. That's what you It is not as simple as this, Brother Al Hamid. It's a responsibility, it's a collective responsibility of the membership of MCB. I'm not just throw, throwing on Zara. Empower Zara, give her the space, give her the tool, the resources. She will create the millions of pounds. Without empowering, without giving a space, without respecting Zara without respecting the executive team, they will never actually uh, raise this money and more. I was in a school in Manchester, and the discussion about how to raise uh, the, the, the deficit of about two million pounds. The discussion was about you have 250 students in the school. Each one of them should be a fundraiser to raise 1,000 pounds over the coming three months. But get the organization or your country and your city to tell you how to Google 
your campaign. How to Google your, and they invest in the Google in the campaign. You know, when they, you pay 50,000 or 100,000, most of the uh, uh, relief organization in this country raise hundreds of millions of pounds every year. And some of them think because they are big, they don't need partnership. They have the size of the dinosaur and the brain of an ant. Okay? So you want the million pound? Yes, we do. Give them the space, give them the resources, and leave them to connect, communicate, and they will do it, and more. And money is not only the only thing, Brother uh, Hamid. They can bring community around them. We always usually build our success and our growth by money. Five million this year, 10 million this year, 15 million next year. It's not. What is the impact? Something I did mention. What is the impact of our work on the community? Who is measuring the, the impact? Unfortunately. Who is measuring the impact of any mosque activity in the community? I finish now because I can see your head going up and down. <laughs> Brother Zahid, do you, did you want to ask a question? Yes, it's uh, uh, Salam Alaikum. Name is Zahid Hafiz. Yeah. And uh, we met two days ago in the very school that you're talking about. I didn't want to disclose the name. But anyway, carry on. So that, you were right, and I was just wanting to reiterate exactly what you were saying, and I've noticed not only in our organization, but most of the organizations belonging to our communities, that the board would like to micromanage the appointee in which they do not. They appoint the person, but don't have complete confidence in the person who performed during the tenure on, you know, for which they have been appointed. So this micromanagement really hinders the work of the person which the board has appointed, mm. with the result that the person actually loses confidence and loses the drive that he or she has when he or she is appointed. So I would uh, really like you to re-emphasize where you are right now that micromanaging is not the job of the board. The board appoints a person, gives the person full confidence to do the job, and the person doesn't do it. Hey, you've been wrong to appoint the person. Yeah. So admit your mistake. And re appoint somebody new. And that's what I think, and I think I totally agree with you, and I wish you would also said that to our board when you were there two days ago. <laughs> so <laughs> I leave that thought with you. So I can yeah. so I'm like, do I need to? What is the question? The question is uh, that they, the, the boards are they appoint people ah. and then don't give them space. It's what you call and micro. Okay, brother, brother Zahid, if you appoint somebody you don't trust, please don't appoint them. If you trust, you give the space. If you trust, you create the space. Either uh, I said uh, create a space CAS or LAS. Yeah, the, the LAS and CAS. You have to trust that the executive. Why do you why do you employ me? Why do you employ me? If you don't trust me, don't employ me. Khalas, finish from the very beginning. If I don't if I don't trust my wife, why should I marry her? <laughs> Seriously, and the same for the for the sister. If you don't trust your husband, why should you marry him? Every day, oh, where are we in? What you doing? What is this? It's not, it's become, the life become hell. It's based on trust. If there is no trust, there's micromanagement. Tell any board that. You don't trust me, huh? that's why you micromanage me. Exactly. Uh, I think that we'll do that way. We'll, we'll add you I think we've got now a short time. What I'm thinking is before we take the course and everything else, might take time. We're coming to that fair time. A couple of small items if that is fine.